to open your mail, start by clicking on the Mail tile. It's a good idea if I first explain the elements in this window. Up here is the search window, where I can search for specific mail or people. Then, I have the folders, like the inbox, sent items, and drafts. If you click here, you get more options. For example, deleted items and junk mail. You likely know a lot of this already. Over here, I have the inbox list, where, of course, all your emails are. To the right of that is a text of a specific mail. I'd like to respond to this email. It used to be that replying to a mail would open a new window. When you reply to a mail now, it doesn't automatically open a new window, which I like, because I used to have 10 to 12 windows open at a time, which was confusing. I've written a short text, which I'll copy so you don't have to watch me type. You can, of course, format the text using these tools if you like. You might already know how to do this as well. When you need to do something else and have to stop in the middle of writing an email, no worries. The email is automatically saved as a draft. Do you already know how to find your drafts using the full version of Mail? In the online version, drafts are saved right with the original email, so you don't have to go searching for them. That's one to nothing for online mail if you ask me. If you do want to open a separate window for your email, make sure you're in edit mode. Then click this little icon here, and a separate window will open. I'm not a big fan of separate windows, however. I prefer to do all my work in the same window. My answer is ready to send, and so I hit send. I adjusted the settings of the mail program so that emails are shown as a discussion thread. I can click on this little triangle to see all the mail in a specific discussion thread. I'd like to show you a couple of other helpful things about the inbox. For example, you can keep a message at the top of your folder by clicking on this pin icon right here. The email is now at the top of your inbox until you unpin it. Then it will go back to its normal position. I flagged this message as important. I've already tended to this email, so I can now unflag it. Unread emails will have this blue bar on the side of them. To delete a message, simply click on the trash icon. You can filter emails with a simple mouse click. At the moment, I'm showing all emails, but I can choose to show unread emails emails sent only to me, or sorted by date, sender, subject, or even size. With this sort, I can easily clear up space. Maybe you've already learned that it's much better to share files than to send files as attachments. I can also choose to show the inbox from showing messages in conversation to messages in chronological order. I, however, recommend to use the conversation view. When you want to write a new email, simply click on New. To select the recipients, click into the To box, and you can select from a list of suggested contacts. You can even select predefined groups. If the recipient is not in this suggested contacts, then you can simply start typing their name. As you've seen, I'm working with my colleague on a marketing budget. 
and I want to send an email about it. So I click in the subject line and give the mail a meaningful subject. By the way, urgent, read this, or similar catchy phrases without descriptive text are not meaningful subject lines, and you will have a hard time to find the mail later if you search for it. I'll add my text. And now I need to attach a file. There are multiple ways to do this. You can access files from OneDrive for business storage, which you will learn more about in a separate video. The other option for accessing files is via group files. You'll find files here that are shared with a group of people and stored together in a separate location. The third option is to select a file from your local computer. You can choose whether to attach a file as a OneDrive file or as a copy. The advantage of attaching a file as a OneDrive file is listed here. Recipients can see the latest changes and work together in real time. You have to consider that OneDrive is a central storage location in the cloud, and you're attaching a link to that file and not the physical file itself. If the recipient doesn't have access to OneDrive, you can, of course, attach a file as a copy, as you probably have already done before you started working with Office 365. I definitely recommend to send attachments as a link to a OneDrive file. This is my file. By clicking on the drop-down menu, I can change the permissions. I can revoke or add permissions. You may also notice that the file icon has the cloud symbol attached to it, indicating that this is a link to the OneDrive file. If you change your mind and want to attach it as a copy, you can do this here. Most of the time, you won't need to check all of these options before you send a mail. I want to point out two important things when it comes to sending emails. One is, you can set the importance of an email. Second, the other often used feature when sending emails is under Show Message Options, where you can request a delivery or read receipt. If you mark the sensitivity of a message as private, the recipient won't be able to forward it to others. Let's look to see if the message sent by going to Sent Items. And there it is. Now you have a good sense of how to use the mail application. You know how to create new mail, include attachments, set the importance of an email, and request a read receipt. Before I end this video, I'd also like to show you a little trick. How to attach an email to another email. Click New. In a new email, if I click on Attach, there's no option for attaching another email. But sometimes you want to do this. To do so, simply drag and drop the email you want to attach. Like this. Nice and easy. Email is an important and often time-consuming part of your work. Join me in exploring more options that will help you to work more efficiently with your mail in the future.